This is not a Prado or a Hilux. What the hell is this? This is a Hiace. Hey guys, Anthony for Before Diesel. We're going to do a little video replacing the injectors on a Hiace van and we don't do Hiace vans. Our 4x4 diesel workshop partners may be able to do high ace vans sometimes, depending how busy they are, because they're also very busy. And obviously we can't do everything, but look, feel free to uh, shoot me a text message and we'll uh, pass some details on if you're in around Melbourne. Uh, it's up to them, it just depends how much work they can fit in. But we'll get into this one and we'll show you what we can as far as injector replacement job goes on a high ace van. So it's a high ace. First thing we're going to do to make a bit of space, let's rip these seats out. There's two bolts at the back of the seats there. We're not going to tell you how to get the seats out. Two bolts at the front, two bolts at the back, and out she's going to come. That's it. Yeah, that's it, mate. Beautiful. Just lift the whole thing out of the way. Oh, no, we've got the wires. Don't forget the wires. That's right, the good old wires to disconnect. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, the cash, look, the tips, I've got the tips. Look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to clean the rubbish out, but we're going to keep the money for cleaning out the rubbish. Okay, that's how it works. <laughs> Mate, you meant to clean up the rubbish, not just take the money anyway, right? See, four bolts, right? Bang, see that? Look at this, we can lean in and access. Look at this access now. Much better. Mate, can you please unplug that injector plug right there? Tell me the first two digits on top of the injector. First thing we're going to do before we start an injector job, if we can, 1-4 should be. Looks like a 1-4 to me. Mm. We're one going four, to confirm that anyway. The point is, first thing we're going to do is confirm. Yeah, they're all going to be a bit dirty or whatever, right? But anyway, a bit dirty, a bit worn, all that sort of thing. Um, there's the pops. Looks like they'd have been out before by the look of those clamps. Hey, look at that. See that? They look a bit like they've been out. Mmm. We'll check those out there. That's definitely a 1-4, right? Look, it depends which vehicle. So I don't think all high aces are 1-4, but on this one, we want to confirm. Look, the time belt has been done. That's good. I think he wasn't sure if it's been done or not. But I think that injectors, that clamp's been out. But anyway, bada bing. We'll get these out and we'll uh, have a look and see who's who and what's what. All Where? right, now we're uh, stripping the car down. This panel also removed for extra room. And that allows a little bit more access over this side. So this side's looking good now. This is actually really good access at this side. Let's go around the other side and see what the problem really we're is. quite restricted here. Just want to show you, we've got all these seats in here, right in your face, whatever. They're a bit of a pain to get out, so that won't be happening. We've just got to learn to work around it, in around this hot engine bay, in this heat here, with this rubbing in our shoulder the whole time. So one of the first things we're gonna do before we go ahead and replace the injectors, we're gonna make a little start working towards that. We really wanna get this, uh, we're gonna have a look in here. You can see we've got the hose off here. We're gonna get the throttle body off next. You can see the throttle position sensor on the right. Very similar, if not the same component to the highest, the, the highest to the Prado. Oh, look at that mess on the butterfly there. You can see that's, I think he's had a carbon clean at some stage. So this will be interesting to see what the results are. So what we'll do next is the four, the, the nuts and bolts to take that throttle body off, center of the picture. Don't just watch this video if you're going to replace your injectors. Watch our other injector replacement videos in the VIP group. And that'll give you more information so you can understand. And you just adapt that information to this vehicle. So throttle body can come off we'll have a look at that and depending what we see at the EJR valve whether we actually drop the EJR valve off so let's get the throttle body yeah, off. the access in there it makes it look easy from up here well, if only the front of the vehicle the windscreen and the whole front hood area wasn't here we could work in from the front but you know and then you see you got the seats up here in the way you know it doesn't give you a lot of access room but we're going to try and uh, show you what we can. I don't know how much the carbon clean costs we've got the throttle body here on the bench you can see that green stuff there, some definitely some chemicals been through there, but look at the residue and what was left behind from whatever they've put in there, you know? This is why, I don't know if you've uh, noticed before, but I'll say, you know, to clean this stuff, it needs to be physically removed and physically cleaned, unfortunately, not, you know, spraying some gear through there. Now, if you had a minimal build-up, like on some petrol engines type thing, uh, it might work out, but, you know, Look at that, that's just, that is the sort of build up that will stop this uh, flat from moving, you know, it'll foul and cause problems. So yeah, 
Carbon cleans, no. The green machine, no thanks. All right, so throttle body off. Let's go and see if we can get this camera in there and have a look what this EJAR valve looks like. You can see a bit of oil and whatever there. This is going to be different. We've also spotted there's a coolant leak. See that coolant down there? It's on the stay. Stay is the bracket. See the bracket? See the bolt there in the bottom middle of the picture? Follow the black along. See the coolant halfway along? Uh, it looks like from that bolt right there in the middle of the picture, there's a little washer on it. I'm not that familiar with it, but by the look of the amount of corrosion around that, it looks like it's dripping directly onto the stay and also running down the alloy and then down the block there. Only a minor leak, but hopefully only a minor repair. So something else we can look into later. Let's try and have a look at this EJR valve. Well, what we can see in there looks pretty good, but I think we're limited to what we can see because the mess comes in at the EJR let me just try and figure how we're going to see this. We're going to have to drop that down to see the next step, to see the next part. We're going to have to get to that. Just trying to get it around there. All right, if you can see the bolt up there, it's kind of like upside down, inside out, back to front type thing. Very difficult to show you. You can. Almost, just trying to see if I can get the camera in the right spot. Get it to focus, not gonna happen anyway, but you, this is one of those things you're gonna have to figure out. This is why sometimes, guys, I just can't show you everything. But yeah, you can see the two nuts at this end, but there's another one around that side. To drop that EJAR valve down, you have to get the two nuts on the end of the EJAR cooler there. Um, and then obviously the stay, the top bolt will have to come out, move the wiring loom, or it might stay there. I'll be clipped on at the other end as well and then loosen off the one against the block in there at the other end of the stay. Mmm. Need to have a look at it to see what we're dealing with. It's unknown. What the blockage may or may not be like in this manifold. I'd really like to have a look at it. Check this one out as well, right? This is an important one. So on this engine, like the part on the Hilux, the oil filter is in the same place, but you can't see it because it's hiding down there. It's not exactly the same. It's slightly different. The oil cooler is different. Very hard to access. You could probably reach around the back here and get to it, but see that panel there? That's what it's there for. Let's go around the other side and uh, unbolt this that. van. Set up nice, neat and tidy, mate. He's into corking, and I bet you you want to know who it is. Sorry, can't tell you that, mate. He's all mine. Anyway, look at this panel here. Mate, can you please open that up for me and show us uh, the access to the panel? So we can just unbolt that. Oh, okay. Oh, so we can't get to it because people that made the cargo barrier didn't consider that. And all they needed to do was uh, have it going up a little bit so we can get to the top bolt. Oh, that's a pain. So we've got to take the whole cargo barrier out just to get the access. So this is a special shout out to AutoSafe. When you design your top price products, right, you need to make considerations for the original design of the vehicle. Maybe you could have a panel that comes out of that, or you could just have the steel going up, have a little, you know what I mean, what do you call it, like a speed hump in the bottom of the cargo barrier. It's still perfectly safe and be a barrier, but then we can have access, right? So that's a shout out to auto safe, not so awesome this time. Alright, now we've got the uh, rear panel off, mate. Can you please demonstrate the increased access now? At the back here, there's a part that we can get access to. Would have been really hard from the front. Yeah, you could do it from here, but it'd be very difficult. Much better from there. Yeah. Secondly, you can access your oil filter right here as well. A lot easier. Yep, that's what and you want. And also the part for the EGR up here as well. Yep. Uh, vacuum lines on the back of the EGR valve mm. and the bolt right at the back here I think we'll the one get... at the bottom of the EGR valve we're trying to get to now yeah, yeah get it get so, it from that side yeah yeah probably easier access from this side so definitely need to be able to access that plate so auto safe need to pull their uh, socks up and lift their game eh yeah. Maybe, is there a way we can do it where we don't, it might sound dodgy, but can we leave the top bolt out and will the cargo barrier keep it pressed in enough so that just using the bottom two bolts and we can more easily slip it in and out next time in the future? What do you think? I reckon. It'd seal up pretty well mm. with two bolts and the cargo barrier pressing over it? And right, also, we'll... 
Sorry. Uh, That's right. Also, you can access this part here where it captures any oil that drops out of uh, the filter when yep. you change it. Yeah. And you can wipe it clean so that you don't get any oil uh, smell inside the cabin. I'll come around that side with the camera and we'll have a look from that side for everyone. So this is the uh, access point here we're talking about, right? Just trying to get the light in the right spot for you. But see all the oil there because whoever's been changing your oil filter, they've been doing it from up the top, reaching around, doing it the hard way. Where look, you've got it right here and you can clean up. So I'll just give you a bit of a look around if possible. See, I'll just get that light out of the way for a minute. We'll have a bit of a look around, might work better. You can see all the oil there. And these are all the things you need to be able to access from around this side. So, band's definitely a lot harder to work on. So think yourself lucky if you've got a Prado or a Hilux. And that's why, another reason why we choose those vehicles and not work on the high aces. Just haven't got time for this business. Look at this, you know, there's like two of us working on the vehicle. It's 10.30, we've been going all morning, haven't made a lot of progress. Just trying to get this EGR valve out. And to do that now, the dipstick's in the way. There's no other way we've figured out so far to get that out past there. So it looks like the dipstick's going to come out. Let's go around the other side. It's now. even hard to get in a position and do a video and hold the camera still. But I tell you, see the EGR valve and you can see the... Anyway, you can see what's going on. Looks like the top half, it's just probably that 10 mil and the dipstick, I'm hoping it splits. Again, I don't know these vehicles that well. We'll have a look, hopefully it splits like the, uh, so we'll see anyway, right? But at the moment, the dipstick is in the way, that transmission dipstick, of getting the EGR valve out and I can't hold the camera. It's been quite a while just to get the next component off. Very difficult vehicles to work on type places. You can see there's no issue with any of these components. I mean, they could do with the general cleanup. This is the sort of thing where you can spray intake cleaners, like, you know, that, uh, what was the brand, diesel intake, decarb, you know, all those brands. I'll show you a can in a minute. I think I've got one there. Um, to clean very light things like that, that's what those products are good for. Any build-up, you need to get in there, scrape it, clean it, wipe it, whatever the case may Not be. recommending brands or anything, but the Liquid Molly, diesel engine intake decarb, is something what you could use for an engine that hasn't got a thick build-up. But any thick build-up, you can't just use a product like this to push it through the engine, to be quite honest. What's going on there, mate? That's completely blocked. You've got a handful of carbony soot. That EJAR cooler must be totally blocked. Can't wait to see up the uh, other end of that, if whatever. And the good news is that means the intake will be clean. Look at the valve, beautiful. Now this thing, I've got to tell you guys, this has got a catch can. Now you've seen all the oil previously in the video, all that oil. So if the catch can even works, isn't it meant to take the oil out? Which is the glue for the soot. The soot's the real problem. A lot of people fail to understand that. But the catch can's meant to stop the oil. So if the catch can's on the vehicle, right, you can see the hoses over here, right? See those hoses there? For the catch can, it goes down to the catch can. It's down there, don't worry where it is. There's a catch can, catch can, catch can. <laughs> anyway, right? But look, you saw all the oil in the other components. And the only thing that's working on this vehicle is how blocked that is. That is bloody awesome. Surprised it's not getting a P0 or anything. Uh, I think we just need to leave it all blocked, uh, put it all back together, to be quite <laughs> honest. Uh, we didn't see anything, all right? <laughs> yeah, maybe we're joking, maybe we're not. Yeah. Let's have a little analysis of these components just quickly. We've already looked at this one, and you can see the oily residue. You can see the oil in this one. All right, let me try and get the light and show you a bit better. Or maybe, maybe just this light. See how wet it is in there? It's wetter than bloody uh, Prado Hilux without a catch can. I don't know what's going on there anyway. Let's look at this. So you've already seen this on the vehicle. So the EGR valve, you can see, I'm not sure if it's identical component, but looking at it, just got to, I've got to, I'm thinking out loud here. Would that be the same two bolts? I'd have to, yeah, I can't think, but it might be different. But it's very similar, even if it's different, but it could be the same part number. But see, the bottom, totally blocked up and dry, right? The reason it's blocked up is because this end is where you get that oil and the oil's the glue. So when the turbo pressure does blow backwards, that's where the little bit of oil goes into here and allows a little bit of glue for all that soot to stick up. What I'm looking at here is why is this not getting a P0400 throwing a code because it hasn't got enough EGR flow. So the EGR cooler at the head end is, looks fairly clear. It looks clear, there's no blockage there because and that's why the plate normally goes there, because it's dry, it's not going to block up. You put something at this end, you're going to have trouble. And as demonstrated here in this video, you might even have trouble, even if you don't put something there, right? So, 
we're contemplating look this doesn't it's just going to get a quick clean there's no blockage there. there's no point wasting time on this so we'll give that a quick cleaner and i don't know whether we should even just tap out what's going to come out and then just let's leave the ejr cooler blocked and then less ejr flow and we'll keep it clean like that that's what i'm thinking to be quite honest nothing wrong with that is there i mean you know if we clear that out, then we're going to risk all the mess starting to come into here. If it's working, and this is, I suppose, a demonstration of, this is like having a plate in there. That's like a plate with a 7mm hole. I don't know how much you can see, but there's a tiny little hole there, and it'll probably flow about as much as a 7mm. Thanks, mate. That's good. Let me see if I can get the light around. Get rid of that light, maybe. How about that? Very difficult. But look, hard to show you that, the reflection and all that with the light. Turn the light off, we'll be in the dark. Let's try this with the light off, not much better. I'll bring the other light up. See, it's just really difficult to show you, but you just have to take my word for it. It's really blocked. It's like a seven mil hole in the wrong spot, but I'm just really thinking to leave it there because you clean it out. There's no point doing R&D, cleaning it out, and then putting a plate in somewhere else or whatever the case may be when it's already beautifully... This is what you call a self... Um, you know, when you... What I'm trying to say here is a natural self-healing vehicle. A natural self-healing Toyota Hi-Ace. How good is that? If only the Prados and Hiluxes could do this as well. You have a perfect system because who cares what's going on? This is nowhere near your engine. We don't want this crap coming near your engine. Look at it. You don't want that going in the engine, right? We want it nice and clear like that. So, why change I'm trying to get you to watch the uh, videos again, but if you go early in the video... Hopefully you'll be able to see that bit of plastic there was broken, so all good. Now, to get the valve cover off on the high ace fans, we need to get this, this wiring loom. You can see it's quite solid plastic bolted down, and it's definitely more difficult compared to the Pratos and the Hiluxes. So, mate, can you tell, do you mind telling everyone all the things you had to go down the back? You know, more or less, how many plugs and things? What, Just how many plugs or things? And About down the five, back. six plugs. Plugs. Yep, so you probably, uh, I reckon you've spent what about half an hour at least down there mucking around with that, yeah? Half an hour just to do the just bottom to get loom that, at the back. To be able to lift it up enough to pull it and forward. All the side plugs here yep. and vacuum lines and uh, plugs and nuts and bolts yep. just to just to lift to it up lift enough it up to get this bit. valve cover off, right? Now mm. we reckon by the marks on the um, pipes, I say they've been off before. They even look bent. And are you loosening one and you said it feels like it's going to spring up? Yeah, is that this one? Yeah, it's still tight. Yeah, so that should be finger tight. So we're just going to video this one to demonstrate. Even on the high aces, you know, they're going to have the same procedure every 40,000, check the valve clearances. So you know what happens. You know why this is broken, don't you, right? And look, I'm not going to blame them because it doesn't give a lot of room and they haven't been given a lot of time, these guys, to get these jobs done. So. And it's not going to cause any issues. What we'll do when we're done is uh, we'll put some extra tape on there. We'll tape it up, make it nice and neat. All the wires inside there look good, you can see. There's no issue there. Let's, I just want to demonstrate, see if this springs off. So you should be able to do that by hand, shouldn't you? There's a bit of a, you can see the pressure. Yeah, hard to demonstrate anyway. It doesn't matter. Anyway, we're going to get these pipes off, right? Dirty old pipes, dirty old valve cover. The good news is... To do the injectors, once that wiring loom's out of the way, it's actually not bad access. Like, I'm leaning in here now, sort of going, you know, I can reach in or right over the injectors, this sort of thing. So, like the 1KD videos, from this stage onwards, you copy those. You can see the pipes, the differences. They're all 17 mil at each end still. Pipes come off. You can cap the common rail up there if you like. Look, just to do injectors. If you're quick, you probably don't need to. You just get some little plastic caps, put it over there so nothing falls in because you don't want there's no filtration at this area as we've talked about before um, it's pretty clean because you've got the seat covering so it's not like anything major is going to fall in but because it's a high ace van a it's not a full drive so it's not going to get as dirty but the negative is i'm not saying you can't wash these engines i've washed engines in vans before but of course it's harder and you get more spray in the area you know you need to be careful put some you need to put you know you wouldn't want to be doing it all the time so what do you reckon? Is it? I don't know if it's springing or not. We're trying okay, to demonstrate. So pipes are off. You know the deal. Pipes are off. You know we've capped up the common rail. As I said, this is a bit grubby, so the valve cover will get a clean up. 
We'll clean up a bit of what we can here with compressed air because we don't want any dust or dirt falling off that wiring loom into the injector inlets. It's going to get all new nozzle seals. We we're just trying to demonstrate, you know, the pipes where, you know, because we saw the clamps had been off, but because they're a bit shorter, the jack in the box isn't quite the same type thing. Yeah, that's a good one, mate. Flicked it out. Beautiful. So soon the valve cover will be coming off. As I said, it's much like the 1KD injector replacement videos from here on in. We'll show you a little bit of video, but we're not going to spend too much time on it. I suppose it's just demonstrating the major differences between the high ace and the uh, to the Prado and the Hiluxes, where they're both very similar to each other. Yeah, no, look, we gave it a quick clean, you know. Like I said, we weren't going to spend too much time on it. But uh, and the carbon clean, the residue, that chemical stuff, and it makes it really hard to clean off the surface, that's why. But it doesn't matter that it's stained. It's just not that shiny good look that we normally see. But at least we know it's clear, if you know what I mean. So we gave the EJR valve. It was meant to be a quick, quick clean, but it took way too long. And that's because of that carbon clean. See what it's done to the surface? It's just ridiculous. Anyway, we're joking around about leaving that blocked. We were actually thinking about it for a minute, I'll be quite honest. But uh, we said, what would we do if it was our vehicle? And that was clean that out there, clean out the end of the EJR cooler so that it can breathe and then put a plate in. Now, of course, we can't do that. We don't buy, sell or install. We've got a feeling, I think the customer's got one, he's gonna put it in there or something like that. Or we're yet to check, could even have one in there and maybe, you know, that's been installed after all that blockage and oh, I don't know, but you know, I think it's gonna end up with a plate in there because that's what people do. And it'll reduce the flow, even though this end isn't reduced anymore. Now, do you understand the problem? If we put a plate in, if we did that and we didn't clear this, then it's more likely that it's going to throw a P0400. But it just goes to show how much the flow can be reduced here and it not throw a P0400. It also goes to show how much you can reduce the flow. The, while that was all blocked and everything, that was legal. Once you put the plate in with a 7mm hole, it may or not, may not be. It just depends what state or country. It's just I can't be bothered dealing with it to work out whether it is or not. So that's why you need to get onto kon.com.au get your own plate with a 7mm hole from them. They're on eBay. K on K, just how it sounds, K-A-O-N, 4x4, 4x4, you know, K on 4x4 on eBay, 7mm plate, I think they're about 12 bucks or something like that. Australian made, awesome company. Doesn't matter, it's just a few bucks. Put it on your key ring in case you ever decide you want to put it in there and keep doing your research to work out, you know, uh, whether it's the oil or whether it's the exhaust gases you think's causing the problem blocking up intakes and stuff. But this one was a lucky one, anyway. We'll continue with injector replacement. Here's the old pipes, they'll be getting replaced, all right. Mm, all new gaskets. All right, three people on the job. One holding the loom, one lifting the valve cover off, and one holding the camera. Very carefully, that's the way. Not that it matters, because we'll replace these top seals anyway on this one. Just show you what it looks like inside. Guess what, funny that, it's a 1KD. Looks very much the same, doesn't it? Look at that, eh? Funny that. Pretty clean in there. It looks like it's had some fairly regular oil changes. We'll get rid of that gasket, do the usual clean up on the head as per the other videos. Remove the, it's gonna get pretty boring because we got it in the other videos in the VIP group. So this one was originally gonna be VIP, but I've kind of gone, you know what, this one it might be VIP for a while and eventually it might come out. Let's see how we go. All right, so we're moving along, injectors out, checked all the valve clearances, they're all okay. They usually are, that's the thing about these. New injectors in. New clamps, looks like new clamps. Um, you know, new, We up, you might have noticed as well, we upgraded, I've mentioned this in another video, see the little bolt right there in the return line, the middle of hitcher? On the older engines, they were a 17 mil head, and what happens, they're a bit big, and they tend to, can grab the little gasket things, the little gasket, these ones behind here, right? Right? And twist them a little bit, so, we do what I call an upgrade and put these, the later models from about 2010, 11-ish onwards, have these small 12 mil heads, and they don't seem to grab and twist those uh, little things. And I mean, you can do the best job, oil it and everything, and sometimes you get lucky, sometimes they just twist anyway, so just sort of let you know about those little upgrade bolts as well. Um, next is, <clears throat> we haven't talked it down yet, we're about to put the valve cover on, check the alignment, make sure it's all good at the nozzles and that. And once that's right, we'll obviously talk it all down as per the, like I said, the videos in the VIP group. Right, so over this side of the engine, it's pretty well coming back together. You can see the hoses that uh, connect down to the catch can. Personal choice on a catch can if you wanted to. It just didn't look like it was working too well by the amount of oil in there. So I wouldn't be relying on that. And then when it blocks up, then the 
whole crankcase ventilation system has failed and it's not going to do the job it was designed to do because there's been something uh put in the line that's meant that's meant to go just from there to there it goes all the way down there all the way back out here anyway i'm not going to go on about it that's in other videos so it doesn't that look better all nice and clean you know whatever happy days we can't control how dirty the plugs are really but uh, all new pipes all new injectors valve covers clean all new gaskets mickey mouse everything's gone back together there's a few more things to do there's some clips and clamps yes you can probably see in the picture just like i can we have not done yet. This is just where we're at so far. Just did a little repair on that uh, bit of plastic up the front there that's, that was broken by someone else. Probably when they got in there to do the timing belt, being lazy, whatever, instead of uh, removing more components to just do the job properly, you know. Sometimes just take a few more things out of the way makes it easier. Over this side, a little bit off topic while we're talking about it. You know how the Prados and the Hiluxes, they have that slight steering rack weep. Well, not to say these don't have a similar thing, so keep an eye on your power steering level on these. And same deal, you know, they're still Toyotas, they're made basically the same way, same quality level in the same factory. Everything's pretty much about the same at the end of the day, even though it's a high ace, not a high lux or a Prado. The EGR cool is different, made by the same company, and it is a quite a different design. I like it, it's a, it's a fair bit more simple than what the uh, in the Prado and the Hilux because it hasn't got that extra moving component. See that? Did anyone notice that? Right. And uh, it's looking pretty good. A few more nuts and bolts. All the EGR valves back on nice and clean. Uh, throttle body, intake hoses. When we opened it, the positive battery terminal, that plastic cover wasn't on, so we just, of course, sat that back on before we commenced work. It's there to save any, you know, safety issues sort of thing. You don't want any short circuits unnecessarily see those fuel line clamps lined up just awesomely oh, i'm sure those clamps had been off before there wasn't a lot of other evidence that had been worked on but um anyway we do know that the uh that the valve cover had been off before which maybe could have caused some contamination to the old injectors um because yeah there was heaps of that black rtv silicon at the front of the cylinder head with the valve cover it's just four little dobs is that the money we found? Yeah. And we're putting it in his ashtray. We're actually being honest. Hey, aren't we meant to take the cash? Isn't the cash for the kids? This, this is all the money. How much is in there, mate? How much is in there? What do we got? Five, six bucks. In the ashtray. What if he puts a cigarette in there? No, it's clean. I don't think he smokes. No. That's all. Right. Look at that. I'll add it on the bill anyway. All right, guys. Um, I don't know what else we've got here. We've got to obviously get the compensation codes in. This is looking pretty good. The engine's nearly ready to start. We've got to do a few final checks. Let's have a look in that rear hole again. Just having a bit of a poke around in there and have a bit of a look-see again, all right. Make sure everything 100%, double check all your plugs, clips, clamps, whatever. And there you go. Look at that, eh? Has anyone noticed, you know, while we're just, you know, videoing, our, videoing around this engine, has anyone noticed anything? And <laughs> Right, um, it's no look. You know, it's no laughing matter. You can tell the genuine Toyota hose. That's a genuine Toyota hose. That's a genuine Toyota hose. If you look here, see that vacuum line. That's a genuine Toyota hose. If you look there, that's the map sensor. You know, the manifold absolute pressure. Right, and see that at the top left corner. That's a genuine hose. But see that black one. That's an aftermarket hose. And see that bracket there. That's a bracket for a map filter. Or what do they call it? A fuel filter. Expensive little plastic thing made by Asin, Asin, whatever you want to call it, right? About 60 bucks worth. We normally replace it, but it's not there to replace. So with this one, we're not going to make any changes at the moment. But what we're going to recommend to the client is we can either order the parts. It's an easy fix, but I would highly recommend the map filter stays in place. The engineers put it in place for a reason, and that is to protect the map sensor so it doesn't get contaminated. Um, you know, the map sensor is going to be about two or three hundred bucks worth. Map. Does that sound right? Have you purchased a map sensor? I haven't bought one lately. No. It's about two or three hundred bucks, it'd be, wouldn't it, right? We want to protect that. That's why there's meant to be a filter right there. It's obviously been like that a while, you know. But so what I'd say is we need to get order the map filter. So basically, you just say, I've got the high ace, I've got, you know, the VIN number, January 2010. JTFHT02P4000, you know, da, blah, 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 and say, I need the map, and, and you know, they may or may not know what you're talking about, but
but you order that and you say, and I need the vacuum line that goes on each end of that also. And what will happen is one end goes to one end and one end goes to the other. And let's just put it all back to genuine how it was meant to be by the Toyota engineers in Japan. Bada bing, and it's as simple as that. And this was made in Japan, that's why it's a quality vehicle. And we're gonna finish getting this back together. You're putting that side plate back on over there, beautiful. This is just about done, it's been a big day. It's a lot of work, guys. Like, you know, the injector job, a lot easier than a 1KD and a Proto Hilux, except for the fact that that wiring limb's in the way and you've got to get that out of the way to do it properly so that you don't damage it, like what other people did. And to get to the EJR valve, it's kind of like, you know, it's, you know, once you've done 100, I suppose you'd get used to it and go, yeah, piece of cake, right? But we don't do them, so I'm like, that is a pretty big job. The EJR cooler, easy to get to. So it's actually not too bad to work on. But uh, I hope I've given you enough information. You can use the, the videos in the VLP group from the Pratos and the Hiluxes and combine that with this video and you'll quite successfully be able to change your injectors or realise that you shouldn't be touching it and bring it to us or one of the workshop partners because, yeah, not us. Don't bring it to me. I'm not doing high aces. Are you guys doing high aces? Happy to replace injectors on high aces? Sure do. Yep, okay, so high ace injectors. What do you reckon over there, mate? Johnny, what do you reckon? Are you, are you yeah. going, I don't know about that. Yeah. No, I know now. He was complaining before, you know, that it's bloody wiring line. But, yeah, but... Oh, so, all right, so, no, okay. No, you, no, all right, so, look, you know, we've got workshop partners that'll do it. It's just, I won't do it, right? So, just uh, hit me with a text message. Say, I want to get the uh, injectors done on the high ace. You know, I'm not promising I've got kits available. They're not going to be on the shelf, but for those few VIPs that are watching this video till the end, or anybody on our YouTube channel supporting, I appreciate that. If you do that, give me plenty of notice, you know, a good couple of weeks to get the, look, these pipes, they took uh, weeks to get, to be quite honest. They took weeks, they weren't they weren't available, they took weeks to get. And the injectors, they weren't too bad, just we need time to organise these things. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Quite that compared to before. Bloody beautiful. And some people doubt injectors need to be replaced. What are they thinking? These little things, they control the combustion. And they're absolutely flogged in 10 years. Even well before that sometimes. It's like trying to like make spark plugs last 10 years. It's not going to happen. Look at that. Cold start. I wish I could say uh, the brakes were smooth. Cold start. And that is just give it a little rev, like a little gentle rev. Mate, it's like a new engine. How good is that? Oh, he's going to love this. All right, guys, that's the deal. That's a video. Thanks for watching. Hope you like it. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Turn the bell on and keep an eye. Like I said, if you need to replace your injectors, I'm not able to help you out with these. I'm not going to keep them on the shelf at this stage. Pots were hard to get a hold of. Uh, injectors shouldn't. Injectors is the most imperative part that you don't want to get wrong. So even if you come to me just for the four injectors, and uh, we can direct you with you know getting the right parts for the rest of the job. But, you know we've got the valve cover, we've got everything else. It's just the pots we don't keep. We could probably give you the part numbers for the pots. Like this, if the package is still there, I'll go take a photo of it.